It's synergy, folks. That's why we're here. Airgun Depot is the greatest airgun company in the world. We sell more guns, more scopes, everything. Everything. But are you feeling it? No, you're not, you don't have the synergy. You are just working alone. You're working isolated. Look, it's like this, like a little cleaning rod. I take it, bent. I, mean, I guess I've only got one now. If I had two, you'd see it's a lot harder to bend. Look, Jason, Jason, this is you. A little flame, no one ever sees it. You have to look really close, no one cares. Ryan, this is you. Look, it gets bigger. That's beautiful. That's synergy. Come on, folks. Do you feel it? And that's synergy. It's power. It's flame. Synergy. You're burning. You're on fire. Synergy. A bonfire. Synergist. I need a video on the synergist, not synergy. Nice speech, though. Okay. But you, but you felt it, right? I felt something. Yeah, you felt it. I felt it. Welcome back to another Under Pressure. You know, it's hard for me to get excited about uh, brake barrels, springers in general that are under $200. Uh, you guys, if you've watched my videos, know that I do love my springers. But, uh, you know, typically when you're getting under $200, you're getting kind of bargain basement sort of stuff. However, uh, today we are looking at something that really kind of breaks the mold in what you can get in that price range. We are looking at the Umarex Synergis. Now, if you have watched our videos before, you know that I love springers, but I tend to not like, um, you know, kind of the lower priced ones. Obviously, everybody likes, likes the nicest things. So it's hard for me to get excited about a sub $200 spring gun. But this gun, the Umarex Synergist, really breaks the mold of what you can get in that price range. Uh, for one thing, it's an underlever. Now, underlevers tend to be among the most expensive type of spring guns because there's more manufacturing, there's more parts, there's more tolerances you need to keep in check uh, than, than a typical brake barrel. And so they tend to be a lot more money. So to find an under lever in this price range is really remarkable. Now the advantages you get with an under lever is the fact that the barrel is fixed. It, it doesn't loosen up over time. You know, you can argue about whether an under lever is inherently more accurate than a spring, than, than a brake barrel. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think it's debatable. But uh, what you do definitely get with a fixed barrel rifle like this is the fact that this is not going to loosen up over time. You're not going to have to be adjusting pins and this sort of thing. Uh, it's just rock solid. Um, the other thing that we get in this gun that's really remarkable is it's a repeater. You can see this magazine over here. Note that the magazine has got a very low profile, so even with low mounts like we have on this scope, there's no problem acquiring a sight picture. So this magazine, uh, you just pull it down like that. Uh, it's a similar style to like a gauntlet or a Marauder magazine. Um, the one difference is, uh, so again, to load it up, you turn that clockwise, rotate it through, drop your first pellet in, that holds that follower in place, and then you go back through and fill up all of the other slots. Now, 12 rounds, and I should mention that this, is a, this gun's in 177, uh, only in 177 at the moment. And uh, so you fill up your magazine, put in 12 177 pellets, uh, pop it back in here, and now, Every time that you cock and fire, you load another pellet in. It doesn't stop you when it's empty. So it doesn't have, you know, that little kind of, kind of plug or stop that a, that a Marauder or Gauntlet magazine has. So you can dry fire this. However, it does have numbers 
on the side, on the face of it, that uh, you can keep track of where you're at. And of course, it's easy enough to pop it out and, and check. Now, this, uh, you know, you can see kind of this mark right here, this area right here that illustrates what number you're on. If this were my magazine, I would probably drill out a hole over there because I have a hard time seeing the number underneath. I have to look really closely. Um, but, it, but it works just fine. So pop that in, uh, drive your lever up, it pushes the pin in, loads it into place, and you are good to go. Now the cocking lever releases really, really smoothly and easily. It's actually one of the nicest under levers to use because it's just natural here. You know, you grab it and you just start pulling the lever down and it um, locks. When you pop it back up, it locks back into place. So you can see I just pull it down just a hair and it releases, cock it, and it really is smooth, easy, and uh, that's wonderful because the, what you're trying to get out of a gun like this is smooth, fast firing, really quick, repeatable shots, and this one does it extremely well. Now this is their TNT, it's a nitro, it's a nitro piston, it's a gas piston, and uh, that has a lot of advantages. You know, they, they, they seem to work better in the, when it's cold because you don't have the grease that gets co cooled up and it affects your velocities. Um, and you don't get the same sort of rotational twist, so it makes them a little easier to shoot um, accurately. We also have a Picatinny rail on top here, and this scope's included. Now this is just a very bare bones, uh, inexpensive scope. It's a three to nine uh, scope, but it's, it works just fine. It doesn't have parallax adjustment, so it's set at about 30, you know, somewhere between 25 and 35 yards, which is perfect, you know, for a gun like this. It gets you shooting. You can upgrade the scope later on if you want, and, uh, but, but you're shooting right out of the box. Now the trigger is advertised as a two-stage trigger in, uh, you know, at least in this gun. I wouldn't call it a two-stage trigger. It's a pretty, it's a pretty firm uh, single-stage trigger, which is fine. I, I like single-stage triggers just fine. Uh, this one's, you know, kind of heavy. We'll, we'll test the weight later on. But, uh, but it breaks crisply and cleanly, and I don't think really affects the accuracy too much. And for a gun in this price range, it's about as good a trigger as you can you can ask for, I mean, there are, there are worse triggers out there on guns, you know, more expensive. We've got a full uh, ambidextrous synthetic stock. Um, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't have a hollow feeling. It, it's pretty solid. Uh, you know, it's pretty th slender and thin, but it, uh, but it fits great. You've got this nice schnabel up here on the front uh, that, uh, that your hand kind of settles into and uh, makes the gun actually pretty darn comfortable and ergonomic to shoot. Now we're going to go to the range and we're going to do some chronograph testing, some accuracy testing, but I wanted to point out before that we're at almost 5,000 feet elevation here in Utah. And what that means is that uh, the air's thinner, so when that piston presses forward compressing this air here, uh, there's less air in there, there's less power. So this gun's advertised at shooting about 1,000 feet per second with uh, lead pellets. We're assuming something like a seven grain uh, wad cutter, you know, a hobby or something like that. Uh, but we never can get those sort of uh, velocities here because the air is thinner and we don't get as much power. And uh, so when we do the testing, just, just keep that in mind. You'll want to add about 10 to 15 percent, uh, you know, more velocity than what, than what we'll get here. That's just what always happens. Guns also tend to be a little bit louder because that piston's slamming a little harder. And, uh, and they tend to be a little bit touchier to shoot because, again, because that piston is slamming, slamming a little bit harder, there's less of an air cushion. Anyhow, that's enough talking. Keep that in mind. We'll go test this and get some accuracy and chronograph numbers for you. Now we'll run it over the chronograph. We'll do a 12 shot string because that's how many the magazine holds. Uh, I'm shooting the field target trophy and uh, they are an 8.64 grain pellet. Over 12 shots, the synergist averaged 8.42 feet per second. Uh, the max was 847, the minimum was 839 for an extreme spread of 8 feet per second and a very good standard deviation of only 2.3 feet per second. 
uh, the muzzle velocity of 842 averaged out to 13 and a half foot pounds at the muzzle. All in all, a very respectable showing here. Now let's test the trigger. Six pounds, nine ounces. Six pounds, four ounces. And five pounds, 1.5 ounces. For an average of five pounds, 15 ounces. Now in our enclosed range, without any sound deadening whatsoever, we got a high of 86.9 decibels, which makes this uh, backyard friendly. I've got 10 field target trophies in the 4.53 head size loaded up. The magazine holds 12, obviously, but uh, to keep the tests fair across the board, we always do 10 shot groups. That's what we're going to do here. And uh, we've got the target set down at 35 yards and we'll see how it does. Uh, this one I'm going to be shooting the center diamond. And that's 10. Now I've got 10 uh, Meisterkugeln. Uh, these are a wad cutter. They're the 8.2 uh, rifle weight uh, pellet here. So we'll see how they do. Uh, we're going to go for the upper left hand corner. And that's 10. This was a very enjoyable gun to shoot. And I, and I very seldom say things like that about guns as springers in this price range, but it really does uh, have a lot going for it. The extreme spread and the standard deviation was remarkable. I mean, an eight feet per second extreme spread over 12 shots uh, is, is really phenomenal, especially, you know, I mean, that, that's good for any springer let alone a Springer in this price range. Now we were, you know, we, our velocities were the 840s, 850s. Uh, you can plan on them, you know, with an eight and a half grain pellet being, you know, up into the 900s, you know, if you, most of you being uh, closer to sea level. Uh, sound was good. Uh, there's a lot, a lot to like about this, but let's look at the accuracy testing first. 
Now this group right here was shot with the field target trophies and I think I, I waffled bef between calling them 4.52 and 4.53 head size. This is the 4.52 head size of the field target trophies. Now we've got a really good constellation right there. Uh, this one, I kind of think that was on me. I, I felt myself kind of tensing up and I, and I, so I think that was on me. I'm not, you know, sometimes you guys complain if I make excuses about the shooting. It's not that. I just want you guys to know what you can expect. And, uh, you know, if it's on me, I try and tell you it's on me. And I think that one was, was on me. Uh, otherwise, we can cover up, you know, center to center, all of, you know, the other nine, nine shots with a quarter. So under an inch, nine out of 10 shots. Uh, now with the Meister Kugel, uh, this group wasn't as good as some of the groups I got in testing. I have no idea what happened here, but again, you know, this group's just a little bit over an inch for, you know, for nine shots again. So out to 25, 30, 35 yards, I think this is a great gun for small game, for some pesting, and, uh, and perfect for plinking in general. I mean, this is, this is, you know, great accuracy for knocking cans around, and because it's just so fast to shoot, and uh, you know you can load up 12 shots at a time it's a lot of fun to to do some plinking with knock out some cans set up some spinners and so forth so highly recommended that way now i did find this gun to be a, a bit pellet picky the ones that consistently performed the best were these 4.52 head size field target trophies uh, but i'm sure there are other ones i didn't test every pellet that we sell so when you guys get this gun, put in the comments below and let everybody know what you've had success with. But I do recommend you pick up some of these field target trophies to get started with. Now, uh, I've kind of told you the things I like about this gun or the things I don't like. Um, really, the only thing I can complain about is, is the trigger. It's, uh, it's not adjustable. That's not to say that if you're, you're a bit of a gunsmith, you couldn't take it apart and polish up the sears a little bit and smooth it out and get it to lower a little bit down. But as it stands, it's about a six pound trigger out of the box. Um, I didn't feel like it was affecting the accuracy too much. It still broke pretty crisply. It was a little inconsistent. Sometimes it'll, it'll break a little lighter, sometimes a little heavier. Um, but in this price range, you were not asking for a for a record trigger or or something like that. So again, I, I you know I note it, but I don't really complain about it. Um, otherwise, you know, I mean the scope's pretty basic. You can upgrade that if you want, but I don't think you have to. It's 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 quite serviceable. And all in all, for the price, you're getting a heck of a lot of gun here. I, I don't think you'll regret this purchase. You will have to learn the artillery hold. And that just means a lot of practice, figuring out how it likes to be held. For me, I was getting the best accuracy with this hand out and open, and I can feel this slot right here, and I tried to set it in the same part of my palm each time, and I have this finger up here, so this knuckle was touching the edge of the schnabel, and then I would hold it lightly in my shoulder, and it, you know, the trigger's a little tough, so you have to kind of, uh, you know, yeah, I put my thumb here and just squeeze, and I was able to get some very good groups and uh, you know repeatable accuracy out of this. So even though it's a, a a gas piston, which tend to be a little bit less hold sensitive, this one you'll still really want to develop the artillery hold. Part of that uh, sensitivity is because the gun's really not that heavy. It's I think it's a little heavier than it looks, but uh, but compared to other under levers and so forth, it's, it's, it's pretty light. So again, this is so smooth, so pleasant to use, pretty quiet. I've never had a single problem with this magazine not feeding properly. It's just smooth as can be every time. I wish that this uh, little window telling me what pellet I was on was clearer, but again, I think that's easily fixable with a drill. And uh, overall, I really like it. I should mention that the safety is, uh, is automatic, or uh, it's a manual, it's not automatic, which is what you want with a gun where you're wanting to shoot and repeat uh, shots quickly. So in this price range, this gun's hard to beat. If you pick it up, I think you'll really like it. You know, your expectations have to be that it's an under $200 gun. You're not going to get the pinpoint accuracy that you would get with three or $400 Springer, but you'll get, uh, and I think if you put a little bit of time into this, then you will get some pretty darn good accuracy out of it. And it's just a pleasure to shoot. 
So if you've liked this video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, ring that notification bell if you haven't already, and stay tuned for next time. We really appreciate you watching. Now that's synergy.